Hello boys and girls, welcome back, or welcome along. Um, yeah, I've decided to get cracking with this one. I'm so excited about it. I was like, no, I can't put it off. It's got to be done. Um, so, quick recap if you didn't see the unboxing. Uh, a very kind chap called John sent me this as a, as a prezi. Uh, the reason being that, long story short, my granddad used to work on on these on the Art Royal at the very, very start of World War II. So much of my time since this arrived has been trying to find out the schemes for a particular one that he would have worked on. So basically September 39 is what I'm looking for. And John, who got this, he kindly also sent me um, some PDFs of a book about these um, and <laughs> narrowed it down and the best I can find is this photo here which uh, my print is running out of ink so it's not that clear but it's got 4a on the tail and I can't find that anywhere else and this is from April 40 so I'm kind of hoping that between August of 39, when they were all camouflaged on the top, at least, and then sky or sky gray underneath, um, they didn't repaint it again before April 40. So this is probably the newest I'm gonna get. There's so many different color schemes on these. Sort of wibbly wobbly lines and straight lines, high up and low down and curvy just impossible to pin one down um so yeah so the variation is gonna be <sighs> jumping ahead of myself a bit here so it's gonna be this aircraft which here is 1941 but with the 4h up on the tail get rid of the red white and blue the round all seems to be in the same place and everything else probably is about the same so i'm thinking they probably just changed that to sort of standardize it because most most planes would have had that uh not having the the numbers up on the tail uh i'm guessing if you know better let me know but that's what i'm going for anyway so preparation wise the other thing i've done gone through the colours and made my normal little translation into mostly Vallejo, maybe Tamiya colours so that I can see which ones I've got. Uh, I've also ordered, Vallejo do a set of Fleet Air Arm colours, which I, I didn't have most of them. Um, and it also turns out that the upper wing had slightly darker colours to the lower wing. So there was a sort of shadow thing going on. So whereas you need two colors to do the camo, you, in, on a biplane you need four. Um, so yeah, I've ordered that set. Um, it's actually quite a good deal. It worked out cheaper than buying them separate. Uh, and I've also ordered a set of ICM pilots, which aren't ideal, but I'm hoping I can kind of mess about with them a little bit and get them to look about right because this doesn't come with any crew <sighs> right anyway let's get on with it let's get building so section one is the cockpit as is normal so i've just pulled out the the frames for this section which are these three, and I've washed them in soapy water. Don't know if I need to, but I'm gonna do it from now on anyway, because I got caught out before, so it's it's better to be safe than sorry, in it, eh? So, having not done a trumpeter kit before, this is a little bit of a different layout to what I'm used to. <clears throat> I would imagine in other, other companies would break this down into different sections, but I'm, I'm hoping it kind of flows and I'm not missing something out. I'm trying to be methodical about it, but 
which is tricky. Also notice that they give you colours like here for the seat belt, say so use this tan colour and wood brown for the, the seat back. But it doesn't tell you about the base of the seat. It doesn't tell you what this part here is. <coughs> oh yes, oh, sorry, green. <clears throat> um, green. Oh, I suppose it does, it's just it's in different places. Okay, I'll take that back. But like this bit here, it doesn't say what color that is. Um, this bit here. Yeah, it's, it, not everything is, is kind of described, but I've looked at some photos of um, cockpits and basically everything's green except for sort of the dashboard and a few levers and things which would be black. So if I go with green with a few black bits, I'm not going to be far off. So... Uh, yeah, let's get cracking. I need to prime everything first, so I'll get all the bits together and get that primed. Okay, so I've just cut all these off the screws and cleaned them all up, uh, ready for priming. But just looking at the destructions, looks like there's a few bits that could go together first. Um, a bit of PE needs to go on the seat, so maybe I'll leave that off for now. But most of these bits could go on as is, and then prime it, and then just go in and do the bits that need brushing. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, so I'm just going to stick a few bits together. So just put a few odd bits on these levers here, this section. Bit here. Um, the seat and these controls. Uh, on here, there's these wheels. They're just in halves, just put them on. Uh, that's about it, really. So, oh, and the seat, the center sort of stool seat. This is two halves and the cushion. So, right, off to the spray booth. So, primed everything off the cockpit area, um, I think. Let's have a look. I, I think I missed out, yeah, I left out the, the machine gun. Um, from what I've seen, you can put that in after, uh, which will just stop it getting knocked about. And the seat belt. I've left for a minute, but I think everything else is prime now. So, so going to give it a coat of Humbrol 226, which is apparently is the right colour for the inside of most aircraft. Looks about right. Um, yeah, give it a coat of that. Blow over the hair dryer. Hopefully, I can get some of that together. Okie dokie. It's the following day or night. This is all had a um, coat of green now. The reason it's all sort of different shades is I sort of mixed up the the white and the black and the grey primer. Did you know some in one, some in another, just so it wasn't completely the same. Uh, a few little bits needed to stay in black, so I'll go over those with. This is still the black primer, so I'll go over those with a bit of paint in a bit. Uh, this arrived today. A set of colours I, I ordered. Uh, can't remember off the top of my head how much it was now, but normally each one of these is £2.50 roughly, and it worked out for the set of eight, um, they worked out less than £2 each. So, unless you've got most of it, well, some of these, it's worth getting this as a set. Uh, as I mentioned, on a biplane, the upper and lower wings were slightly different shades. So this contains all four of those camouflage colours, plus the two underside colours, which might be that one, not sure, um, and a black. So there we go, there's 
a sort of guide to which colours you need. So it even shows the swordfish on there. So you've got dark sea grey, dark slate grey, extra dark sea grey, and light slate grey. So you have top and bottom, top and bottom, and then the sky for underneath. Um, so yeah, nice little set, uh, well worth it. And something else came today, which is, we've got two sets of these. Um, from the same company that makes the airbrush I've got is these magnifying glasses sets. It's got five different uh, lenses and then the frame and it's got a, a little light on it. And I'll show you a picture in a second of me modeling them for you. But we've had a little play with them. They're absolutely amazing. Um, you can get right up close to things. Um, we was having a look at one of the soldiers, at, a 135th scale soldier that Sarah's working on. And there's like straps on his boots and insignia on his jacket that we hadn't even seen until, <laughs> until we put these on. It's like, oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, that'll be very, very handy for doing the little detail stuff, like instrument panels and things like that, and figures. So, back to tonight. Um, I think I'm going to try... I'm a little bit not sure about assembling the cockpit yet, um, just because I've ordered figures and they're going to need a bit of assembly and a bit of bodgery to fit. I'm not sure if it's going to be easier to fit them in and then build the cockpit around them or put them in after. Don't really know. Uh, so I think actually what I'll do tonight is I'll do some of the detail stuff on here, like uh, like painting the controls. Um, I think these panels here might have been silver. There's like a sort of checker plate thing there. I think those were sort of you know natural metal finish. Uh, like the, the stirrups there, they were probably bare metal, so I'll do that. Um, this stool, that would have been like a sort of leather, leather look. So yeah, I'll, I'll get all those bits sort of detailed and I'll get to play with those glasses. <laughs> Yay! Uh, just a little aside, so I've opened up the, the set of paints and it's actually got this rather handy looking uh, piece of paper <laughs> um, so a little bit there about sort of who used what and then each color which scheme so there's the temperate scheme and what years it was then North Africa and Mediterranean so quite in-depth about which one was right for which area and what what years so very very useful and then a whole load of different aircraft and what what colours they were. That's useful, wasn't it? Wasn't expecting that. So uh, I think that, that's going up on the wall. It's a little bit of reference that. Cool. So these are the pilot figures I've got. Not sure if they're the ideal ones. This is um, British, American, and Soviet, which is obviously not quite right. I think that's supposed to be the British fella, but he's in tropical hot weather shorts and t-shirt. I think that must be the Soviet fella. Uh, well, no, that's probably the Soviet fella, isn't it? Yeah, that'd be the Soviet one. And an American. But looking at the bits, uh, it's all arms and legs and heads, bodies. So I think I can cobble at least one good one out of all the bits maybe a couple and then i might be able to find some other bits that sarah's got knocking about and turn them into an observer or a gun or something we shall see so i'm trying to assemble the pilot but obviously the pilot isn't specifically for this kit so it's going to need a little bit of jiggery pokery so i thought the easiest thing to do is to fit the seat in it's got this kind of a-frame thing here so get that in and then I can try and fit the, the pilot's legs around it and maybe assemble him in position and then paint him perhaps. 
Um, so I've just got that and that's just drying. So I'll let that set before I try and jiggle it around. But there's this bit here, um, this part, which is part number E7. And it shows that the bottom of it, this end, that blunt end, fits into that little hole there. But there's no sort of positive location. It doesn't show where the top goes. Um, I'll show you what I mean on the instructions. So it shows you it there, fitting into that hole. But then it, it just sort of disappears. You can't really see, it doesn't give you an angle or anything. It doesn't show you what it attaches to, if anything. Um, I've watched a couple of other YouTubeists videos and one of them left it out completely um, which is an option because I've no idea what it is and the other one had it in that hole there and it was kind of resting oh, let me show it and sort of resting about there which as I don't know what it is I don't know uh, doesn't kind of look right from the angle, but I, it sort of looks like it needs to attach to something, but I can't see what. Um, down there, is it? No. I think I might just sort of put it about there, and it, it's probably going to be about right. Uh, I just don't know. Mm, yeah, I think I'll do that. At least it's attached to something then, so it hopefully won't fall off. So I assembled him sort of from the legs up um, with a parachute on his bottom because that's a seat cushion as well. The legs and the body are okay, but getting the arms right was a bit tricky. So the best I can do, I, I won't jiggle it around too much because it's still drying, but where his hands are is slightly too far forward of where the controls are this the joystick thing. So what I'm gonna to have to do is when I put when I've painted him and I go to put him in, is just move the stick forward a bit, hold that and then sort of click his fingers around it a little bit. Um but where he sits no he won't go won't go in now his arms are on. But his feet don't go far enough forward because there's supposed to be pedals on here, which is uh, E19 there, which I've managed to lose. It pinged off across the room, can't find it anywhere. We've both been crawling around trying to get it, but yeah. Um, so I thought I'd sort of try and cobble up a replacement for it, but his, his feet don't come anywhere near it. So I'm hoping once it's assembled, you probably won't notice that the pedals aren't there. Um, we'll see. But I would have had to make some even if it was there because it just looks silly. You've got the pedals and then you know, six inches before his, his, the boots sort of touch. So he's right back here somewhere. Never mind. It's one of those little glitches. Um, but yeah, he looks all right. It's cobbled together out of bits of all three kits. Slightly weird that he's offset, but never mind. It'll do. It'll fit. And it's looks better than an empty cockpit so right then so nearly ready to finish assembling the cockpit um done that section there it, once you sort of looked at it a couple of times it sort of makes sense where everything goes so i've just assembled all the little tiny bits like the, the magazines on the side wall there painted the pilot really enjoyed doing him it was good fun yeah there's one little one little catch, so the control stick, it, it, when you fit it in, it, it only goes in in one position. Um, and it was slightly too far back from where his hands rest. So what I was gonna try and do is pull, pull it back as I fitted him into the seat. So it's sort of slotted into his hands. Did that, then glued him in, and then realized it had popped back out so it's it's just sitting behind, but I think probably once he's in, 
might not really notice. It doesn't look too shabby, I suppose. Um, one thing I did like doing was the this rack of flares that sits on the side. Yeah, there's a little row of flares, and they had a little dab of what colour they were on the top. So that was that was quite fun. Um, another bit that went quite well. So this is the control panel for the navigator observer. Where these dials were, I've just got a little bit of um, white paint, quite watery, just dabbed it in, and it kind of capillaried around the edges. I think that looks pretty good for a dial. Quite pleased with that. Same with that little one there. Hmm. And then just sort of picked out bits here and there in silver just to lighten them up a bit. Um, what else? This bit here, so this is where the gun mounts. What I must say is everything fits together so nicely on this. So obviously you just glue in the, the side bits and that bit fits in the middle. But it's so well made that it's just got enough tension in it that it'll just sit where you, where you put it. Really nice that. Uh, so yeah, I'm just letting everything finish drying for the time being. Um, one other thing I've just done. I've just sprayed the, the inside of the fuselage. It's a bit of interior green and still drying. But then this section here is obviously the, the canvas and I've gone over it a little bit of green, don't matter. What I'm going to do with that is go over it with a bit of, uh, I've got some of this artist's acrylic red. I'm going to just darken that down a little bit so it kind of looks like primer and then dry brush that in there because apparently when they were made, we see the sort of canvas stuff went on first and then they primed it and the 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 paint or the the primer used to soak through so the insides used to look kind of reddish um so that's the next job um uh, yeah all good fun yeah everything fits together so nicely really nice bit of kit um the only thing only criticism really um was this bit here because it didn't show where it fits here but minor thing um as you can see here i'll just put it that's where it sort of seems to rest so that'll do cool right onwards so far so good so the sides go on the fit is beautiful um you've got these little sort of tabs that slide in one way and then little pins the other and it all just lines up perfect uh so the little radio setup, you know, that's what it is, just fits in after. It looks on the instructions like you have to kind of slot, slot it in at the time, but it you can put the sides on and then it's just, that'll just drop in afterwards. Um, so now just to put the top on. So hopefully that'll, that'll just drop down over there like that, I think. Right, I'll have a little play. Mm. Well, I've clearly done something wrong here. Um, so as you can probably just make out. So you can see the holes at the side of this bit. And there are pins that it lines up with this side. Let's turn it around and see it better. <coughs> Get around that way. Okay. So that's that pin. Oh, that pin goes in that hole. And that pin goes in that hole. But uh, helps you go around the right way. That's probably what I was doing wrong. Mm. I hope. Uh, right, okay. So that one goes there. That one goes there. Yeah, that's what I've done wrong. So this thing. 
bulk head kind of thing. That wants to be right where his seat is. So, hmm, what have I done? It's probably a really obvious error, but I don't know what it is. Hmm. So I'm not sure what I did wrong there, but everything sort of seems to be in the right place, but didn't line up. So I've obviously made a mistake. So I've prized out the the pilot and the seat. A um, little bit of damage to the bottom of the seat, but wouldn't see that. Um, so this top bit is now in the right place. And he has to sit quite a lot further forward it's probably like sort of five mil or something I've, I've had a good look around I can't see what I've done wrong so don't know so all I'm going to do is take the bottom of the seat off that little pin there uh, sand that down a little bit and then put it in as far back as I can in in there and hopefully that will look okay well, that's kind of the best I can do. So you can kind of just see that bit there. Right, they're moving right forward. I really can't see what I've done because that sort of A-frame bit inside, uh, that bit, that's where it should be. And that kind of sits in there and that's right. So, And that fits in the holes there and that's right. So I can't see what I've done, but obviously I've made an error somewhere um, yeah so I'm just hoping now so I've, I've glued the seat in as you can see a bit further forward so all I'm hoping now is that when I go to fit this in the fuselage he's not banging his head on the front or anything well, not like the dashboard's not there dashboard is that the right word instrument panel yeah mm, find out tomorrow so I've taken the fuselage halves off the sprues, cleaned them up, um, just dry fitted them together. Fits really good. Um, there's a couple of little gaps along the top, just need a tiny bit of filler, but other than that, pretty good. Uh, what I wanted to check was that the cockpit would fit and it seems to fit just about all right. There's a little pin there, there, and then you can just see, just drop that on there, that's it. So I think that looks all right. So although he's sitting a little bit further forward than he would, I think it looks okay. Yeah. Um, I had a bit of black paint knocking about, so I just sort of did a bit, a little bit of pre-shading. Not something I tend to bother with, but well, I'll give it a go. Um, and yeah, the inside, so this is that red I was on about. Just used a bit of red and a dry brush and just made a mess of it. Uh, I've got to do this little bit again. I'm not sure if that shows up. I think it probably does, doesn't it? Just about. Mm. Yeah, probably just about to see it. Actually, I think I'll probably leave that. That'll do. Um, and then just touched in a few little bits here and there. Just artistic license, just kind of picked out bits. Um, I assume bits of black. Don't know. Right. Uh, now, weirdly, before it comes to assembling this, it says make the engine. And then do, is that the tail, isn't it? And a couple of bits inside the fuselage. Um, don't know why it says do the engine now. It's not really in sequence, but I, uh, I'll just do what they say. So the cockpit is pretty much done. I've ordered some other figures to try and do the um, the gunner and the observer. So section two, basically engine. Um, 
and then it's back to section three you finish the cockpit off but anyway um so basically all this is is paint each bit different colors and then stick it all together so i'll get the airbrush out so section two just looking at it i've got all these bits painted now unless i've lost the plot somewhere these two bits don't have a color next to them all the others do so i've got them all all done all i did was put a little bit of gun metal in with i still had a bit of silver from that in the, in the airbrush so i just put a little bit of gun metal in and did those with it don't know if that's right or not um yeah so i'm just going to assemble that it shows there once the engine's assembled to fit it into the nacelle is that the word this bit um it says to do that bit copper i think what i'll do is i'll dirty up the inside of it um this bit i guessed it would be the same sort of copper color inside don't know um but i'm going to try and leave this off until the end so i can paint that when i do the rest of the fuselage because that seems like the easiest thing to do Okay, okay, I'm going to call that it for part one. So, cockpit's all done uh, for now. When I get the other figures, I'll try and bodge them to go in the back. Engines together. Fuselage is done. I think there's a couple of bits to go in in the next section. Just a little like, instrument panel and stuff. Um, but yeah, so far, really enjoyed it. A um, little bit of a cock up with placing the seat up. No idea what I did wrong with that, but seems okay. Uh, right, yeah, see you in part two. Bye.